ba 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 boom explode What's going on guys, Jake Farina here from BoomExplode.com and this is our video review of SSX for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Now it's been almost five years since the release of an SSX game, that game being SSX Blur for the Wii, and about 11 years since the very successful XSS Tricky hit consoles. Known for its over-the-top snowboarding antics and unique style, the franchise has become incredibly well known and popular in the category of extreme sports video games. So naturally, after word of the release of another SSX game, excitement ensued and was followed shortly by concern. An 11 year hiatus from the last major hit such as this has the potential for great failure, but it also has the potential for great success. Fortunately enough for franchise fans, the 2012 reboot of SSX is the perfect example of great success. EA, whether it be sports, Canada, or big, has always taken the appropriate tactic of focusing on gameplay mechanics instead of campaign, resulting in a lackluster and depthless storyline. SSX follows suit this approach. As a member of Team SSX, you've been personally called out and challenged to conquer the nine deadly descents by former member Griff. These nine ranges, including the last fatal descent, are all based off real-life locations such as Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Everest. Using a few classic characters like Mac, Kaori, and Elise, accompanied by some new faces, players set out to divide, shred, and conquer a set of these treacherous mountains, each equipped with a dangerous aspect that requires some new piece of gear, unlocked by being the scores and times of the mountains in the range leading up to their descent, in order to survive. The thin air of Mount Everest's extreme elevation needs an oxygen tank, massive gaps need a wingsuit in order to glide across, Pure ice slopes need the point of a pickaxe to allow for turning, and as frightening as this may all seem, the breathtaking environments and playground before you seem to mask the fear at times. Two basic game modes make up the campaign and online play, Trick It and Race It, and a third is designated to the Deadly Descents alone, Survive It. Trick It is the traditional get as many points busting gnarly tricks before you hit the bottom of the line gameplay, and remains the focus of this XSX game. Race it requires that you obtain the fastest possible time on the same run as the Tricket course, which means that you need to find the shortest line to the base, all the while avoiding the tempting jumps and rails that surround you, because they only slow you down. Finally, survive it is simply that. Survive the physical assault from avalanches, mazes of trees, and extreme temperatures that are thrown at you by each descent. Joystick controls as well as button inputs can be used in unison fairly easily to help the player perfect the conquering of each trail. But if you prefer a more nostalgic feel, a classic controls option is available in the menu. Turning using the joystick controls is way too sensitive and can often cause some mistiming when hitting jumps and rails. It works in the reverse too, however. If you've blown by a jump that is crucial in maintaining your trick combo, simply jerk the joystick in the right direction and you'll quickly cut back onto the right line. For those who haven't become accustomed to the SSX style, falling and slipping is very forgiving at times. SSX lacks a traditional multiplayer, but does have a feature very similar to Need for Speed's Autolog, titled RiderNet. RiderNet allows for real-time comparison of stats obtained throughout the game against your friends. This comparison allows the game to generate challenges that you can carry out, and if victorious, awards the player credits that can be used for the purchase of new suits, boards, and gear. The more friends you have, the more challenges available to the user. And if you run out of those, a constant global stream gives you the option of competing against the world to earn potentially huge amounts of credits. These worldwide events do expire, however, and when they do, the person with the high score at that time is awarded the credit pot, which can be upwards of billions of credits. This form of multiplayer is different from traditional gameplay because you don't actually compete against the enemy in real time, but instead race alongside a ghost of that person who has already completed the course, and that ghost is tracing out the line that they followed. The awesome gameplay accompanied by stunning graphics and lifelike mountains is even more complemented by the massive drops and insane beats offered up by artists such as Skrillex and Foster the People. 
The soundtrack is so fitting that people who aren't fans of electronica or dubstep, such as myself, will even find it catchy and hard not to bob along to at times. After reliving the tricky experience that I once grew to love, and even finding a new favorite in the extreme sports category, the incredible graphics, near seamless gameplay, and tons of replayability caused me to give this game a 9.5, meaning I highly recommend picking it up in case you're still on the fence. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys, and as always, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, the one you're on right now, and make sure to follow us on Twitter, at Boom Explode, in order to stay up to the minute on our news, reviews, and opinions. Thanks again.